Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can use the Ledger Nano S. Now I've only had this a week or so, I'm not claiming to be an expert on this, but it is a relatively easy device to use and hopefully I can show that in this video. If you want to see the unboxing, please refer to this video, I'll link to it in the description here and you can see what was in the box when I bought it. Um, but for now, what I want to do is jump over to this beast um, and I'll show you how this works and I'll give you a better understanding of what you can expect if you do want to buy this hardware wallet. So we'll jump over just now. Um, now, obviously when it's not switched on, you don't see anything, but yeah, it's a fairly, you know, straightforward device. It, it pretty much just is a USB drive. You know, that's all it is. Uh, it's pretty cool. It says Ledger there. It says Vires in Numeres in the back. Um, but what you've got here, you've got the, the USB connection here, micro B at the, if I bring that up, sorry. Um, you've got that at the left hand side and here you've got two buttons. And essentially these work as navigation, so left and right, up and down. But um, they also work when you push them both together, it acts as an enter button. So I'll show you how this works. Now this is what you'll be doing the very first time you get it, is turning it on like this. and you will be asked to set a pin code. Now, there's eight digits here, but you can set any pin code um, from between four and eight numbers. Now, the more numbers, the more secure you would think it would be. But bear in mind, of course, that every time you want to access this, every time you, know, you want to actually use the ledger, you're going to have to enter that pin code. But you can see here, you know, you just get through once, like see here, my first number was five, I'd push two buttons, go to the next one, I can go three now. Um, if I make a mistake, I can go back, go back again, and then I can put in my pin code. So what I'm going to do now is put in my pin code, and I'll put this to the side. Um, now, um, it is worth noting that um, in addition to the pin code, what you have to do is enter a passphrase. Sorry, they give you a passphrase. So after you enter the pin code, you've selected your pin code the first time. Uh, I'm just going to enter this on screen. Um, so you, you'll enter your passcode, your pin code that you want to use, anything between four and um, eight digits. And then you'll be giving a, a key phrase and it's 24 words and you need to write these down. Now, you should write, they do actually provide uh, a little sheet that you can write it down on. I didn't actually use that, but you can, um, you can use that if you want. Alternatively, just write all the words down in a piece of paper, keep that piece of paper secure. And what it will do is, you know, this is what you use to actually recover the device. Uh, and after you've written down all the words, it will say, for example, what's the fourth word? What's the eighth word? And you, you put in, you know, which one it is. You select from a range of words and then it will authorize the device. So I've I've um, entered it now. In fact, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So once you've actually did it, this is what arrives. So you've entered your pin code and this is what is displayed. So my super duper secret uh, pin code has been entered. Um, and this is what you've got. Now when you first add it, you'll probably only, I think you only see the Bitcoin wallet at first. But you can see here I've added Bitcoin private, um, Digibyte, Ethereum, Litecoin, Zencash, Zcash, and then it's settings. Now you can remove and add any of these wallets and I'll show you that in a, in a bit. I just want to quickly show you how this works here to give you a better understanding of how it all ties together. If you enter settings here, you can see display, you can change the brightness, you can rotate the screen, invert colors if you want to do that. Uh, I prefer the normal one to be honest. Uh, you go back here, again pushing twice is the enter button. You've got security, auto lock, uh, change pin number, change uh, passphrase. Um, so set temporary, attached to a pin. Lots of options like that. Um, device, firmware, reset all. Assistance that just gives you a link to the website. Um, so I think that's all, yep, that's all the settings. So when you click on a wallet, well, it doesn't actually show you anything yet because it's only this, it'll show you the address here when you're actually making a transaction, but it'll say use wallet to view accounts. About, We'll tell you the version of the wallet. And that's it. When you're using it, this is what you'll see. 
Now, I'm going to come back to this in a second. I'm going to come back to this and I'll show you how this will actually work when you're using it. But what I need to do now is jump over to my monitor. I've got Chrome here. This was my unboxing video. I'll get rid of that, actually. don't need that. Um, now, so I'll link to this. This is the, the start page, ledgerwallet.com start forward slash start forward slash ledger nano s hyphen sir uh, now this you know this part here just explains it as you know just shows you what i was saying there usb cable the buttons the screen the swivel cover it's a very simple device um, and it tells you how you set it up as in choosing your pin code backing up your recovery phrase that you can see there 24 words this is exactly what i was saying here and then it says install your ledger app so what i'm going to do now is show you the apps that they're referring to so on this page you'll see discover the apps um, and actually when I'm here, remember I was talking about the, the passphrase, I'll just kind of quickly show you this to just to kind of jump back. See when I was talking about the passphrase there, this is what I'm talking about, recovery sheet. You'll get this, I showed you this in, in the unboxing, but just so in case I forget, this is for the 24 numbers. So just for reference, there is a recovery sheet there, you can use it to enter your 24 words if you want. I've just kept mine blank. So if I jump back over to my monitor, um, you can see the ledger apps. And this is how you're going to actually use the device. So there's a few different things here, right? Um, I'll quickly touch upon the authenticator, right? So if I show you the authenticator, um, where have I got it? I've got it here in my I've got it here in my phone somewhere. So if you click on this Ledger Authenticator, there, install Ledger Authenticator. Now, I'm not using this. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but um, this is if you want even more protection. Now, if I jump over to um, my overhead camera, we'll see, where is it? Ledger Wallet. And, it, it, I mean, it explains there, you have to pair the Ledger Wallet. This is to enable second factor validation. So this is to make everything even more secure where you can validate it, not only with your Nano, but also with your phone. Now, the reason I'm not using this is, well, for one, um, it's because, you know, I want things to, well, a little bit simpler and I don't want to, you know, be verifying lots of things. Maybe I should use it. But um, if you look on um, the Play Store, look at those reviews. Every single one of them there, one star. They all say it crashes. They all say it doesn't work. Now, so you can see here, you've got different wallets here. You've got a Bitcoin and altcoin. So this is probably one that everyone wants still. There's also one for Ethereum and Ripple. So these ones, if you need, if you need to use Ethereum, you'll need to install this. And, and these are installed as browser extensions. So these are all browser extensions. You'll see this soon. Um, you've got Ripple and Ethereum, but the only one I've installed so far is the Bitcoin and altcoins. But if I jump over here, Ledger Manager, this is another app that you should install. And as I say, this is how you actually add and remove wallets to your device. So if you click on get the um, get the device or get the app, it takes you to the, the Google Chrome Web Store and you can see I've already installed it. So I'm going to launch the app and it's just popped up here at the side. So this is what's on my wallet. You can see the firmware. So you actually, the first time you actually load up your Nano S, you should um, update the firmware. It will be older than the one that's available. So update the firmware first. And then, <coughs> excuse me, you can uh, install the wallets that you that you want. Now you can see I've added Bitcoin. I've added Bitcoin private and things like that. Um, I might take away some wallets in the future. I might uh, add some more. And um, there's a Fido this, if you want to add like two-factor authentication. You can use it for that as well. It's not something I'm going to be using it for. Um, not in the short term anyway. So this is where you install your wallets. This is the app that you need to install first. So again, to just kind of rewind, first thing you do when you get your device is you connect the USB cable. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll connect a USB cable and then you'll enter your pin code and then you'll write down your 24 uh, words, your recovery phrase. You'll write all those down and then you'll verify it. Then what you need to do is jump over that starter page and go to the, the ledger and um, what they're calling the ledger manager and you install the ledger manager and update the firmware for your nano. Very, very easy. You just connect it. It'll tell you what to do. Very, very straightforward. Then you install the apps that you want to install. And here I have, you know, well, the apps I'm talking about, the wallet, sorry, the wallets that you want to install. They're calling applications because um, like Fido, for example, that is an application, it's not a wallet. So you've updated the firmware on your Nano and you've installed the wallet apps for the coins that you want to store on your hardware wallet. What you want to do at this point is go back to the Ledger apps page and then scroll down and you'll see the 
apps here. This is the wallet apps. And you've got Ripple and Ethereum. Obviously, if you want to store those coins, you'll have to install those ones. But for most people, I think they'll be starting off with the Bitcoin and altcoins one. You go down to the bottom page, uh, bottom of the page, we'll see it here. Now, this unfortunately only seems to work with Chrome. There isn't any Firefox extension or anything like that. Um, it will work on Windows, Mac and Linux, Chrome and Chromium. But yeah, you are forced to use Chrome and a lot of people won't be happy with that. When you click install, you'll bring up uh, the Chrome Web Store and then you can launch the app. So at this point, what I'm going to do is show my overhead camera because what happens here on the Nano will dictate what happens here on the wallet. So Bitcoin is probably the best example here. Click on Bitcoin, pushing both buttons. I will select Bitcoin and I'll select Legacy. And this will show you the wallet and this is what you will see for all your different wallets. Um, so you can see you can send, I mean it just kind of looks like a, a regular wallet. Settings there, there's tools, lots of different things there. Now the interesting thing is, you know, with this now, if I go back to the Nano, I'll quit the app. You can see it stops there in the wallet. So if I, um, I can show you Litecoin, for example, it will load load up Litecoin. Again, I can choose Legacy or Segwit, uh, Segwit um, and it loads up my Litecoin wallet. It's synchronizing. There we go. Um, fairly quick. Now, the other one, Digibyte. Now, I actually sent, I think it was like 50 cents to my wallet. Uh, for my Digibyte wallet. And you can see there, I've got 13.267 Digibyte. So, I was just trying to show you, um, you know, just to see how it all works. So, what I'm going to do at this point is uh, send, send some more funds there. And I'll show you how this works. Um, so, I've got Digibyte. I've got Send. And what I do is, I'll send all funds. Um, and now I need to do, uh, I need to select an address. So what I'm going to do is I'll click receive here. I'm going to display the device here. And with Konami, what I can do is that. And I'll, where are we? Sorry, here. I'm, I'm looking at the. Right, so. I've got it there. I've got the address. I'll click on send. And now I need to enter my password on Konami. Um... So that's that. It says it's sending. It says it's sending. Sent. And did you see how quick that was? So you've got the address. The address shows down there as well. Confirmed. And look at that. That's how quick it is. Now, obviously, every coin isn't going to be as quick on the Nano as Digibyte. Digibyte is always fairly quick to send. But it shows you how easy it is to use. Um, so yeah, it's very, very simple to use, very, very quick. You can see it's unconfirmed there, but that will, you know, that will be confirmed in time. Um, now if I, again, I'll come back to the Nano and what I'll do is I'll quit the app. Uh, now Bitcoin Private is an interesting one. If I load it up here, you will see opening your wallet. This may take a few minutes. Now, you can wait all day, that's not going to work because you probably saw me um, earlier on in my browser. Um, it doesn't really work fully with Bitcoin Private. It does work, but it, you need to actually use the Electrum wallet. I was a little bit disappointed by that. It's something that might change in the future. But right now, what you have to do is, you can see here, open Bitcoin Private in your ledger, install and create an Electrum Bitcoin Private wallet. Um, you need to restore or new, and then you need to create it as a hardware device. So it will make your Bitcoin Private wallet much more secure. Essentially what you're doing is securing your Bitcoin private Electrum wallet using your Nano rather than storing the coins on your Nano. So in, in many ways you're simply using the, the, the Ledger Nano as a security device, as an, authent a, an authenticity type of device. Kind of like Fido works, you know. Um, so there's instructions there. I will link to that in the description here so you can check it out. It's one of those things, so it isn't truly on the wallet per se. It's still in your Electrum wallet, um, but when if you do load it up, um, you know once you get it synced, it will show there. It's kind of like a workaround in many ways. I, I suspect it'll maybe change this in the future. Um, but again, as I was saying, everything comes from this. You know, when I click here, I double click, and it will load up Digibyte.
and I'll go off again uh, Zencash now I've seen a few people saying that it's you know it's a pain in the ass if you're using this a lot to do trades but I don't think that's the case I think it's pretty quick you know it's as quick as you would expect from a wallet and if you just sit there and you've got your ledger nano sitting there plugged in once you've entered the passcode it's good to go but obviously if you leave this after a period of time the the, the pin code will you know uh, you'll need to you'll, you'll be logged out and you'll need to log back in again some people won't be happy with that but you know when it, when you're talking about security you always have to talk about putting in extra steps uh, and that's what you have to do when you're using your nano now unfortunately the, the standard cable isn't the longest cable actually but you know it's 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 okay but you could use maybe a perhaps a, a longer cable um, overall, I would say that the device, once you've figured out how it works with the pin code and all that, a few minutes, you'll, you'll figure out how this all works. So essentially, once you get this, you put in your pin code, you write down your recovery uh, phrase and all that, and then you jump over to the Ledger website. You can add this authenticator. I'm sure some of you think, well, why didn't you install this? But, you know, the bad reviews are putting me off. Um, but yeah, you want to install the Ledger Manager, which is this so that you can install the firmware and the wallet apps and then what you want to do is install the Ledger wallet, Bitcoin and altcoins or the Ethereum one or the Ripple one. Now if you decide that you don't actually need, for example, Zcash on your wallet, you can remove that app using the Ledger Manager. Um, if I launch the app, um, alright, you can only use one of these at a time so I need to close that, launch it. Um, now here, I'll, I'll actually, what I can do actually, I'll, I'll just install a random one, right? So I'm going to install Dash, right? And this, you know, this is all that happens. Uh, and if I you see down there, allow Ledger Manager, yes. And it should install it now. And if I, I'll maybe show you in this camera, it might be easier. Now you can see Dash is there. And if I jump back over to my browser, I'll jump over to the, um, Knowledge of Wallet. I'm going to launch this app and now what I'm going to do is that will load up and then dash. The wallet is synchronizing. Right. Perhaps dash is a, a similar... Oh, there it's there. I was going to say maybe it's a similar situation as Bitcoin Private. Um, no, it seems to work okay and again, quit the app. There you go. So, um, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, you know, obviously you've got reservations. I do need to use it more. I do need to um, play around with it more and start actually using it to store money. Um, as I've not been using it for that yet. I've really just been playing around with it. Um, I noted yesterday in my video that this isn't suitable for mining. They say that you shouldn't mine to this. You should mine to another wallet. And that was something that kind of annoyed me a little bit because what it means is if I'm going to mine Zencash or Ethereum, two coins that, you know, are... Uh, that I have mined in the past and will probably mine again in the future. They advise not mining directly to your Nano. What they advise doing is mining to another wallet and then storing the money there and then transferring it to the wallet. And I'd prefer to mine directly to the Nano um, to cut out the middleman and it saves me installing another wallet on my computer. Um, but as uh, the user my anti spanbox left a comment today talking about this and he says that he mines, di I think it was him that said that, he mines directly to his nano but what he does is set the custom payout higher. So if you've got a pool and it allows you to set a custom payout, you could always wait a day or so and then send the funds directly to your nano and it's one big payment rather than payments every t 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Ideally, I wouldn't want to do that though. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to install another application, another GUI wallet or another Electrum wallet and then send the funds to the ledger. Um, but at the same time, I don't want my money sitting on a pool's uh, wallet. I'd rather the money was with me in my wallet. So um, depending on your point of view, that's maybe just a minor, in minor inconvenience or something that will put you off with uh, the Nano. Uh, but if you look at this as a storage device and maybe just look at... The, the wallets installed on your PC as the ones that you that you mine to and the one that you do you know, small transactions, then once you've got a lot of money, you would send it to the Nano, then maybe it's not a big thing. Now, I will tie up my thoughts about the Nano at a later date. What I'd like to do is uh, check out the Trezor, um, and I'd also, if I can get it, I'd also like to check out the Keep Key. So I'm going to do unboxings of those, and I'm going to show you those as well. 
And I think that once I've tried some other hardware wallets, I'll maybe have a better understanding of what I like about this and what I don't like. Um, but overall, I would say after you know playing around with it for a few days, I've had it about a week or so, but after playing around with it for a few days and testing how the apps work, it's actually pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I will link to the, the Ledger Start page and all that so that you can get all the information that you need. This Ledger Start page has everything. It shows you how to get started. It shows you the actual device. Um, sorry, I'm in, the, I'm in the wrong. I'm showing a black screen there. Um, I'll, I'll show you this. Uh, I'll link to this area before uh, below. You can check out how you set up the pin code, the recovery phrase. It's all very, very easy. Um, and you'll get a better understanding of how it all works. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And until next time. Thanks for watching.